Hey guys, on today's tutorial, we are looking at how do you learn and memorize a jazz standard. All right, let's get into it. Hey guys, I'm Glenn here. And uh, let's, we're going we're to look at Skylark, the tune, just a, a little bit of that. But also we're going to just, you know, talk about seven tips of how you can learn faster a jazz standard and memorize it um, as well. So, all right, so let's get into it, eh? So tip number one, guys, is to listen to the tune. All right. Now, it's interesting that our ability to memorize a melody, I mean, I don't mean like the notes of, I don't mean like those, like be able to play it, but to memorize the sound of it um, is actually quite extraordinary. All right, so um, so I would I would encourage you to continue to develop your ear. If you're not already doing that, start developing your ear, and there's a whole bunch of exercises. I'm gonna do another tutorial on that real soon. Um, but, but basically, start to try and develop your ear, but just listen to the tune a whole bunch. Listen to a whole bunch of people, diff you know, a whole bunch of different people playing it on different instruments and to be honest, it's one of the easiest and funnest ways to learn a tune, just listening to it, all right? Think about jingles, you know, advertising guys have been using jingles for 50, 60, 70 years, right? Because they know that that tune can be catchy and it can get in you and uh, you sometimes can't get rid of it, even if it's something you don't want. And I could probably mention something now and that would annoy us all because we'd be thinking about it for the rest of the day. But I'm not gonna do that, I'm not gonna do that. So listen to the tune, that's the tip number one. All right, tip number two, and this involves listening to it, of course, is to transcribe it. All right, start with the melody, just transcribe the melody just I mean you can write it down if you want to but you don't have to but just be able to play it all right so now you might find this hard uh, and therefore you know that's okay what we what you can do is you know try and do as much of it as you can and do this with simpler tunes um, you know you might want to do it with something like fly me to the moon where it's just going down by step and up by step you know almost right and sometimes goes uh, you know, there's a couple of little, little skips and stuff like that, but it's basically kind of steps within the key that it's in, all right? So you might find something like that really easy to do. Um, and, uh, you know, this is going to be one thing that's going to help your ear as well. But here's the thing, as you learn it by ear, as you really kind of nail it that way, you will memorise it long term. So that's a really... Um, useful little tip for you, okay? Now, if you can't transcribe it, that's okay. Use, use, use a real book or a fake book, right? And uh, then, you know, we'll start playing it, okay? So, now you might be able to work out the chords, you might not be able to, um, depending on your level of ability with your ears, all right? So, let's keep moving anyway. The third um, tip that I've got for you is to play the bass and the melody. And so, I'm just gonna bring up uh, a little bit of Skylark here. All right, so you can see here, all, all we're going to be playing, we notice how we've got a key signature of, of the three flats, right? So we've got C, C, I've got an E flat bass, I might play it down here, an F bass, just really simply playing through the tune like this. After you've had a go at transcribing it, but if you, you know, if you've had a go at transcribing it, you already know how to do that, right? If you don't, then just do it this way, you just kind of play through it. Don't try and improvise through it. Just learn the tune. I mean, you don't have to play it perfectly. All right, but that's kind of the idea, right? So that's step number three, is just to play the bass and play the melody. It really helps you to kind of get an idea of the structure, just kind of get a feel for the piece of music, know how it sounds or how it's meant to sound. Then you can start messing around with it and all that kind of stuff a bit later, right? So number four is very simple uh, as well, and that's just to play the chords and the melody. Now, you might want to start doing chord voicings. You might not at this point in time, okay? So just play the song, enjoy it, and you know, have a bit of fun. All right, so you've, you've played it through a couple of times. All right, now we want to really learn it so that we don't have to look at the fake book we don't have to look at the real book or whatever it is that we're using, right? And so, and so you can just kind of keep it in your head, right? That's that's what we're kind of looking at now, right? So, 
Um, so this next step is to analyze the harmony. This is gonna help you heaps in memorizing the tune, all right? So let's, let's go back to that little example there, Skylark, right? So, I mean, we can think about things like, is there any two five ones? Or what key are we in for a little bit of time and kind of try and you know, move it around? I mean, here I'm looking at Skylark on this particular um, transcription of it, which is in the, the new real book. Um, I've, I can see that the bass line is moving up. So I, in my mind, I'm thinking one, two, three, four. I mean, that might help you uh, in terms of the chord structure, right? So uh, the melody I'm just kind of using my ears, right? And then think one, two, three, four. That's kind of maybe the start. You might want to think that, you know, put the chords to it. One, two, three. You might think G minor seven, but E flat on G is pretty close to the same chord anyway, right? You know, so depending on what kind of sound you want, you, either, either one of those things would, would work quite nicely. And it goes back to the one. Uh, and, then, and then it goes to the four is the A flat, right? So the A7, in my mind, I'm thinking the A7 is like a tritone substitute, you know? So it's like E flat going to um, the, so the tritone substitute of the chord that leads into the A flat, right? So which really is E flat. So it's like E flat major seven, E flat seven, A flat major seven. So I'm thinking one, and then that one turns into the five, right? Does that kind of make sense? That's what I'm thinking in my head as I'm analyzing that structure, right? But, but it's the tritone substitute of that. So I'm gonna think one, oh, the one turns into a dominant. Hey, but let's play the, the tritone substitute and then go to the, the next chord, right? Which flows on. Okay, so that's kind of the idea. You can see now that the melody starts to drop down as well and uh, if I bring up the next one there you can see that it went from uh, it's going A flat G F so it's kind of heading down um, and it's two five going into the E flat then we've got like a one six almost a one six two five goes on towards the end there as well all right with with the A flat kind of thrown in there so you can kind of think through some of that stuff that will kind of help you to I guess think of the the chords not just as like chord by chord by chord, but put them into um, their their bigger context. All right. So and I and I often uh, talk about any kind of music with with my students. I talk about it as a language, right? And so I talk about you know when we're when you're first learning how to read, um, when you're first learning about what kind of notes to play, right? Um, instead of just thinking of this as C, D, E, F, G, I'll teach my students to think of that as C running up to G, okay? Like so, so it's like, it's like combining it into something. And it's kind of like, you can see the words above there, analyze the harmony, right? It's kind of like you're not reading A, N, A, L, Y, C, T, H, E, you know, like you're not, you're not trying to go T, H, E, uh, right, right. You, you you work that out in kindergarten, right? Year one, at, at your first couple of years of school, you kind of worked out how to read basic words, and then you just you know learn that word. You look at that word and you just go, "I'll oh, analyze." Right? You you instantly see the you know in analyze how many how many letters is there? It's seven letters. You instantly kind of see that seven letters, and our brain just turns those seven letters into a word, right? Rather than it being seven letters. Okay, and so chords for me is a little bit like musical words, all right? So it's like, you know, you've got these five individual notes, these three notes or whatever it is that you've got. And instead of thinking of those five notes as, uh, you know, C, E, G, you know, as, as that, you think of it as C9, right? And that helps you to kind of memorize and make it a little bit easier. All right, if we extend that, um, we, when we're talking English, again, reading or, you know, just speaking, we don't think about, uh, we, don't, we don't think about, you know, analyse the 
harmony, right? We think in phrases, we think in sentences, right? We think in kind of, we, th we think thoughts, right? You know, we don't think just one word at a time, okay? So we want to try and do that when we're playing the piano or guitar, or whatever it is that you're playing, when you're trying to learn a jazz standard as well, right? Try and put those chords or those words in the context of a phrase a sentence or something like that, right? So that's why you want to start thinking 251 rather than F minor going to B flat, going to E flat major 7, all right? You can think F minor 7, going to B flat, going to the E flat um, major 7, but it's way easier to think of 251 in the key of E flat, okay? Does that, hopefully that makes sense, guys. Um, so that will kind of mean that, you know, maybe four chords, five chords, you can think of as one idea and that will help you to memorize that tune. All right, so let's go back and let's have a look at some of this stuff here. We've got A flat going to the E flat on G to that F7, right? So again, you might want to think, okay, there's a stepping down thing going on. You might remind yourself. We've got the F7 or you could think F minus seven going to the B flat seven, right? That's one, uh, sorry, two, five, one going into that E flat. And then it's, then it's like a one, six, two, five, all right? So then it becomes an easier thing to memorize. Now, you have to do that, right? Because there's a lot of chords in this song. And if, if I go back to that other, the first line, I mean, even if you wanted to kind of think about some of the, uh, um, some, of, some of the other chords that are going on here, right? So the, in the brackets, okay, in the brackets is the suggestions for how you might want to reharmonize, okay? There's a lot of chords there, right? So you gotta think, oh, okay, well, what is that reharmonizing? Well, that B flat minus seven to the E flat seven is just two five going into the A flat. The G minus seven going to the G flat is really just a, a two with a, um, a tritone going into that F minor, all right, or the, you know, so it's, it's all, all you want to think of it is just, you know, kind of going down by step, which is really what kind of what tritones are doing anyway. So there's a lot of chords in this song, and this, this particular piece of music goes for 32 bars, right? So <laughs> there's a lot going on. There's an A section. Thankfully, the A section gets repeated three times um, with, with a few little tweaks. And then the uh, B section is, you know, is a, is a different section altogether. But hopefully that makes sense, right? So hopefully that's helping you. All right, let's move on to the uh, next idea. Okay, so the next idea is um, is to practice four bars. I, I've written four bars at a time, but it's really just to practice in short sections. Okay, I, I read a study uh, many years ago when I first started teaching piano and it was to do with classical piano but I think the idea um, fits really nicely anyway is that to you want to break down whatever you're learning into very short sections and this study and I can't remember where it's from and I haven't gone looking for it so I do apologize for that guys all right the internet's yours you know go for it have a look if I'm wrong you know, let me know but this study said that if you wanted to memorize a piece of music that if you played it from the start to the end and got, it, and got it right each time. It actually talked about if you get something wrong, it took like you know, 50 times to, to fix it up or something like that, right? But it said if, you, if you're getting it right from the beginning to the end and you play the whole piece of music in one, you know, one go, I'm assuming you know, you know, two or three page piece of music, right? It would take you 35 times to play it and memorize it, okay? That's not too bad. I thought, oh, that's, that's okay. But they said, but if this is to go from your short-term memory into your long-term memory, right? Now, they said also in this study that if you, if you learn a short section, which was like two bars, maybe three bars, whatever it was, and, you know, you worked on the fingering and you worked on uh, analysing, you know, little bits of it and all that kind of stuff. But if you played a very short section... Um, it took seven times of playing it to put it into, to take it from your short-term memory into your long-term memory. So that meant, really, if you break up the piece of music into, you know, a whole bunch of different sections, you can play the whole piece of music seven times and memorise the whole thing, right? Now, of course, you've got to work out how, okay, now I've got to play it all the way through. I've got to, you know, I can't just, you can't 
play a song for two bars and stop and then play another two bars and then stop. You've got to make sure it's a continuous flow. But the idea was that if you just practice short sections, you will learn it so much faster. So if you practice and try and memorize four bars at a time, for example, and a lot of jazz tunes are some kind of 16 bar or 32 bar kind of um, formats, uh, which means that, you know, divisible by four, um, then it's not going to take you very long to learn it at all. But if you just try and play it over and over again, play it over and over again, you don't analyze it, you don't think about doing uh, two, you know, memorizing two five ones rather than, you know, just chord by chord by chord, uh, you, it, it's just going to be a lot faster to do it this way. All right, hopefully that helps you. All right. Uh, number seven is to make the tune your own tune. All right, so this means now start thinking about reharmonizing, start thinking about uh, what you want to do with the melody as you kind of mess around with it, right? You know, so there's so many, you know, what are you going to do with the, the voicings? And once you start kind of making it your own and start thinking, oh, okay, that's how I'm going to do, that's how I'm going to voice it, it's just that take you know taking some time to kind of work out how you want to play it just helps to memorize it just kind of helps to memorize and uh you know make it really important to you it becomes your thing right as you um let go of those creative juices it's going to be just you know it's just going to be great all right so make it your own now bill evans quoted uh, it's been quoted many times, and he said that you don't. He didn't really knew, know a tune unless he'd been playing it for 40 hours. Now, I'm not saying you have to do that, but uh, Bill Evans was obviously a master. Right? If you want to know the tune, maybe as well as Bill Evans knew them, um, then you've probably got to work on them for about 40 hours. But if you take my seven steps, I reckon you'll be able to kind of learn a tune within a couple of hours and really have it in your long-term memory. Not just, oh yeah, I learned it this week, and, but you know, six weeks later, some guy on the bandstand says, hey, do you want to do this tune? And you're like, yeah, that's great. And you start to play, and, oh, how's the bridge go? Oh, you know, you've forgotten the chords, you've forgotten um, how it goes. All right, I'll get a little bonus tip for you. Um, and that bonus tip is to play it in all 12 keys. Now this helps us to memorize a little bit, but it also helps to make you a way better player and to really, really know this tune. There's some things that you'll learn in different keys that you will, oh, it's raining in, <laughs> it's raining, you can hear the, maybe the bit of the static there. There's some things that you'll learn in all 12 keys, in, like in one key versus another key that you'll like better than others. And then you'll go, oh, you know what? That fell really nicely over the fingers, but I, I could probably, replicate that in a in in the original key for example and, and you might come up with something new the other thing is that people don't always play the standards in the standard key too i mean there's a standard key for a reason you know uh but there are a couple of there are a couple of you know for example um autumn leaves there's there's like two standard keys you know uh there's the a g minor one first chord being C minor, and then there's the, uh, this one here, first chord being A minor, right? So there's those standard keys. But singers, here's the thing, singers will have a very specific key they want for nearly every tune, all right? So you wanna be able to, you do wanna be able to transpose pretty quickly. Um, it's gonna help you to play better, um, and it's gonna get you ready for that, for that gig that with a singer and uh, he or she, has got some different keys that um, that you need to do. I, I remember playing with uh, Sydney legend Mari Wilson uh, a few gigs, and uh, you know uh, there was a whole bunch of tunes that she would call, and and they were always in a different key to the one that I learnt them in. So uh, that was a great time for me to just really brush up on the idea of I've really got to know all my keys for all my tunes. And uh, well, yeah. She, she helped me in a massive way in that kind of forcing young Glenn into making sure I knew the standards really, really well. All right, guys, hope that helped you. If you like, um, maybe like. If you, if you want to see some more, subscribe, and I'll see you again soon.